Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of the Dark Table from A to Z series. My name is Hal and in today's episode we're going to be discussing how to use a color checker in the color calibration module. If you've missed the previous videos in the series about the color calibration module or if you'd like a refresher, follow the link on the screen before continuing with this video. There is a list of supported color checkers that can be found on the Dark Table website. There'll be a link as usual in the description to the user manual. And what I have here is the X-Rite color checker passport. So what you need to do is make the photo on the field. Make sure that you center the color checker in the photo to avoid any lens distortions. Make sure that the light source is far enough to light it evenly and adjust the angles to avoid any reflections on it. In summary, you need a clear and clean photo of the color checker before you can use it. I'm gonna start by turning the image Freehand, 90 degrees, ish. Oh, I think it's minus 90 then. And then I'll just cut it. I'll just cut it to the middle, make sure we can get it as straight as possible to make our life easy or easier and there you go the first step according to the manual is to enable the lens correction module to correct any vignetting but that was so much in the middle of the photo there is no vignetting so we'll continue from there so now we go into the color calibration module, click on this triangle here to calibrate with a color checker and we get this, well, first we make sure we have the correct one, which is correct here, it's the x right color checker 24 post 2014, and here's a list of the supported ones that you can see as well, and then I'm going to align the colors, those squares with the squares on the screen. to increase the patch scale to try to cover as much of the squares as possible again just make sure that all of the squares remain within the color patches and not outside because otherwise the whole point it's gone. Or maybe smaller patches than a bit. Okay, we'll take it from here. Then we click on the recompute the profile. And the first thing you see here is whether it says profile quality report, whether it's good or bad. If it's good, you can accept it and say accept it and it will apply the corrections to the color calibration module you've got the color balance but you've got as well different RGB values as you can see now how to read the report you've got the value here that's called Delta E and that's the error between the reference color of the patch that's coded in the system or in the system in dark table and what's actually displayed here if you have a delta e of 0 it means that there is no error the obtained color is exactly the reference color if you have a delta e of 2.3 this is defined as the just noticeable difference less than 2.3 
it means that the average observer will not be able to tell the difference between the expected reference color and what we got, the obtained color. That's what we're looking for. And a delta E of more than 2.3, it means that the color difference is noticeable to the average observer. We have to keep in mind that this is a game of balance. We would almost never be able to get all of the colors correct because of so many limitations, especially on the gamut of colors that you have. Most of the time, you have to find a balance that's acceptable for the colors that are in the photo that you're working on. Here, if we see the output delta E, it says that the average is 1.74, which is good. That's less than 2.3, but the maximum is 5.06, which means that one of the colors is out of range and will be noticeable. At least one, which is the maximum, will be noticeable to the average user or observer. The other two values are the D, well, the input one, so what we started with, and then you have the first step, which is after the white balance, so after just the cat tab has been adjusted, and the third one is the output, so after the RGB values have been adjusted as well. If everything goes according to plan, each step should be lower than the one before it. We can see that. As you can see, just adjusting the white balance left us with a quite a high delta E average. That's why adjusting the colors was necessary. Under the quality report, we have the profile data, and these are the settings that were entered in the CAT and RGB tabs. So if we look at them, this one would be CCT, it's daylight. Under that, the matrix is the RGB, so the first one is red, and you can see that the values should correspond, and green and blue is the same. And under that, we have the normalization values, which is the settings that we can put in the exposure module, and then recalculate the profile if we want better accuracy. Let's try that now. It's minus 1.34, it's easier here, I guess. Exposure, yeah. We have uh, minus 1.34, and this is 0 0.01. Zero, 03. Okay, well, let's try again. Going to recalculate. And is this better? Yeah, it is better. Mildly, but it is. Now we have here the overlay, and this one is supposed to show us in the middle the expected color to compare it with the, what we have in the back. The next clue in the overlay here is these crosses or diagonals. If you have no crosses, so just a square, that means that the delta E is less than 2.3. So the ones, the colors that have only a square are accurate enough that the average observer will not notice any difference. If you have one diagonal, like this one, or the grays, then the delta E is between 2.3 and 4.6, which means that they are mildly inaccurate. And if you have two, you guessed it, it means that the delta E is more than 4.6 and they are highly inaccurate. So what's inaccurate here is the blue. Since, like we've already discussed, it's practically impossible to calibrate for all of the colors, we have here a Optimize for settings. And this one allows us to tell the module what or which colors to optimize for. None means that 
the module is not going to optimize for a specific strategy, but it's going to optimize for what the color checker was made for. So it depends on the manufacturer. The second one is neutral colors and it will give priority to the grays and less saturated colors. According to the manual, this is quite handy if you have a fluorescent or LED lighting. Next we have saturated colors and this one gives priority to primary colors and highly saturated colors and it's useful in product and commercial photography. The next three are skin and soil colors, foliage and sky and water colors which I think are pretty self-explanatory. Next we have the average delta which will try to minimize the average so across the whole spectrum and the last one is for the maximum delta which would try to minimize the maximum. Let's try this one and as you can see the maximum has been reduced. The average is a little bit higher I think. I saw more colors go into the one diagonal I think. However, since I want to use it on this photo, I'm going to leave that and optimize for skin and soil, recalculate, it has a higher maximum. Wow and I have a higher average as well but it's probably better in the correct colors I'm going to accept the computed profile now I can do this in two ways I can save it here as a preset or I can go into light table and then do a select selective copy select none take the uh, color calibration module, say OK and then paste it. There you go. If we did the other method I'm going to reset this. That's the photo out of the camera. I'm going to reopen this one save this as a new preset and I'm going to call it cosplay color balance say ok open this one and I can apply it from here. Voila! One last button to discuss which is the check the output delta E and this is used to perform a single delta E computation against the output of the color calibration module. So you can use it if you have copied the profile from another calculation to to this one to check the to check the difference and according to the manual this is used to check the accuracy of the profile if it was calculated in particular conditions against the color checker that was shot in different conditions or to evaluate the performance of any color correction performed re earlier in the pipe so if you've already done yourself some color calibration and correction you can check the effect in here with this button and that's it for this video I hope that you found it interesting if you have any questions remarks or corrections please leave them in the comments below and I'll see you next time bye bye